Being a resident is like no other job in the world. In this video, I'm bringing you along for a full 24 hours with me as an orthopedic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic. And let me tell you, the start of the day was insane. Before heading into the hospital, I got the chance to visit a few prosthetic and orthotic clinics and this is like some straight to the future type of stuff. Check this out. I have a few electrodes on my arm and just by flexing my wrist, I can control the prosthetic hand. The fingers flex when I flex and extend when I extend. This is crazy. This is the kind of tech that's really, really helping amputee patients regain independence in ways that we couldn't imagine just a few years ago. And seeing how much effort goes into making these devices both functional and lifelike is so inspiring. As a resident, you really just have to learn to go with the flow of the day because nine times out of 10, you have no control over what your day looks like. One of the unique aspects of being a resident is similar to being a medical student. You have both your clinical responsibilities, but also responsibilities related to education and learning. Um, the difference between a resident and a medical student though, is that the responsibilities for working as a clinician now are enhanced. But oftentimes you have to figure out how to educate yourself on your own time because the vast majority of your time, you are responsible for taking care of patients. Um, and so it's this tough dynamic where uh, you have to learn a lot to be able to better effectively take care of patients. Um, but 75% of your day, you are working to care for patients. And um, there are not as many dedicated times throughout your schedule that are dedicated to your education. So you have to figure out how you can fit that in when you can. Whereas in medical school, oftentimes a lot of your uh, day is just prioritized to your learning. You're in a classroom, you're shadowing, you're doing all those kind of things. And then as you progress throughout medical school, you take on a little bit more and a little bit more of clinical responsibilities. But again, the vast majority of your day is centered around learning as it should be. And so as a resident, um, you know, you just gotta figure out how you can take 10 to 15 minutes here or there and learn or uh, wake up really early in the morning and dedicate an hour or so to deep work and some studying or stay up a little bit later and do the same kind of thing. But it's oftentimes a challenge to figure out how to do that around a already busy clinical schedule. Spending time on the amputee service has been one of the most eye-opening experiences of my training so far. Losing a limb is a massive lifestyle change to say the least. It affects patients physically, emotionally, and mentally. In this service, we work with patients preparing for amputation and those navigating life post-op and in those first few weeks. And there's often a deep sense of mourning. But the incredible part is, Fast forward just a few months and so many of these patients are not just adapting, they're actually thriving. Seeing their resilience, their determination, it's honestly been one of the most inspiring parts of this rotation. One of the unique things about residency and the schedule of residents is that at least for surgically based specialties and I'm an orthopedic surgery resident, that it is not shift-based work. Um, it is not, you get in at nine and you go home at five every single day and you know without a shadow of a doubt what your schedule looks like. There are some days that stretch far longer than you expected. And I think it's also important to note that there are also good days that end earlier than expected. But one of the, I think, most unique things about our schedule is especially surgical specialties is even when you kind of do have a shift style schedule, um, you kind of have two shifts in one sometimes. And that's basically what's happening today. Today, I worked a relatively normal day shift from you know six to six, but then I also have to work a night shift, which is again, six to six. So it ends up being six to six, but 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> Most careers don't work that way, but in residency, one of our responsibilities is to take call. And depending on the specialty that you're in, uh, the program that you're in, the number of residents that you work with, the amount of call and what your call looks like varies significantly. Um, all throughout this week, I have basically been going home. I would have been home by this point. It is now 
almost 7 p.m. But roughly once a week, I take night call at one of our hospitals. And again, that's 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And this is in addition to my day responsibilities. So about once a week, there ends up being kind of a 24 hour shift. Um, now, what I will say is that after this, and again, this is program dependent, specialty dependent, department dependent, um, but oftentimes you get a post call day, which just means after this 24 hour shift, that doesn't mean that I, when it's 6 a.m. tomorrow, that I just go back into work and it ended up being a 36 hour shift. Thankfully, we have a post call day, which just means after call, you get the next day off. So I will have tomorrow off to kind of hopefully catch up on some sleep and get some more work done um, before starting back up in the days. But one of the hardest parts of this is maintaining any type of consistent sleep schedule when you go from days to nights. And honestly, maintaining any form of consistency with a sleep schedule in residency just is, is impossible. One thing my family and I have been working on is avoiding the habit of complaining. It's so easy to groan every time that the pager goes off or to see every inconvenience as a huge interruption, but I don't want to become that kind of resident. Instead, I'm trying to reframe every moment, every page, every patient as something to be grateful for. Because the truth is, the ability to tolerate inconveniences is one of the strongest predictors of resilience. Studies show that those who embrace discomfort instead of resisting it tend to have lower stress and greater long-term success. So yeah, getting paged sucks, but I get to be here. I get to help and that's something worth appreciating. This is something I dive into a lot in my weekly growth newsletter. So definitely check that out. Link in the description if you're into this type of stuff. I've talked a lot about how much time I have to spend in the hospital as a resident. But one thing that I've realized is that residents and honestly, like, most people in healthcare are building up a resentment about how much time we have to spend in the hospital, how much we work. Uh, but the problem with that is residency is a training experience and training by definition suggests some type of desire to pursue mastery. I want to get into a training environment so that I can get better and become the best that I can be in doing that thing. And when you're pursuing mastery, it's a time dependent type of experience. And what that means is basically, the more time you put in, the better that you'll be. You know, it's the 10,000 hour rule, regardless of if you agree with that idea or not. It is pretty clear that the more experience that you get, the more things you see, the more operative cases that you participate in, the more consults you see in the hospital, the more that you talk to patients over the phone, the more interactions you have with the nurses, all of those things, the more that you do those things, the better you will become as a resident and ultimately a provider. And so there's a little bit of dissonance or disconnect about wanting to become great, wanting to become a great resident and a great physician, but not wanting to spend the time that's necessary to do that. And I'm realizing that because a part of me does wanna be home more. I wanna spend more time with my family. I wanna spend more time making these type of videos for you guys, um, filling my cup, doing all those kind of things. But I also wanna become a really good physician. I wanna become a really good surgeon for my patients. Um, and I think in today's world, where people oftentimes are prioritizing more control of their time and of their life. Um, people who seek mastery, but also control over their life are kind of facing this dilemma. And I think residency is a perfect kind of microcosm of that. And I'm recognizing it in myself. And what I have, I think, learned about thinking about this is it just really comes down to your priorities and me trying to understand my priorities um, and ultimately my priorities are to my faith you know my love for Jesus I mean my family those two things come before everything else but becoming a great surgeon is close it's a close third for me right now and the thing about a training experience is that it is time dependent, 
but it is not infinite. It doesn't go on forever. And so I think embracing a season of life that you know is going to come to an end, which is residency or any training experience when you're just really trying to seek mastery, knowing that that's going to come to an end, that is a five year long process for me in orthopedic surgery. The more time that I put into it when I'm in that season, I think the happier I will be afterwards. And I don't think that I will regret trying to put as much effort and time pursuing mastering during this season of life. But I do think that I would regret missing out on those opportunities when I only have five years to do it. And so, I don't know, those are just some midnight thoughts that I'm having on this call shift. But let me know in the comments if you guys resonate with this at all. Um, I'll be thinking more about my priorities and maybe how to optimize my training while also trying my best to fulfill my priorities to my faith and family. But interested to hear you guys' thoughts. There are a few things as triggering as getting a page at 2.24 a.m. But this is the life that we chose. <laughs> you know that previous uh, conversation on, you know, mastery and having to get those reps and uh, you don't have those conversations and thoughts with yourself at uh, two in the morning. Those are like a midday or morning motivation kind of kind of vibe. Not to the only thing that you're motivated to achieve at two a.m. is being able to watch the back of your eyelids for as long as possible. That's 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 the main goal at two a.m. But. In this life, we gotta take care of patients. So let's do that the best that we can. Do that the best that we can. Somebody needs something at 2 a.m. We'll figure it out. All right, it's that point in the night where I have a decision to make. Do I try to sneak in a quick nap or do I accept my fate and just power through? Well, I guess considering I'm already being paged again, looks like no sleep for me tonight. I guess my doctor can't get mad at me for not sleeping if the reason I'm not sleeping is because I'm doctoring, right? Right? They probably won't also get mad at some carbs and maybe a soda at night since it's just part of me doctoring, right? It's 3.45 in the morning and I um, just got back from checking in on a patient. Um, I got a page that uh, one of the patients on the floor was having a little bit of uh, new numbness and tingling um, just down into the foot, which, uh, you know, requires us to go and check them out, um, you know, ourselves and make sure everything is okay. Sometimes after surgery, um, depending on what type of, uh, you know, bracing that the patient is in, depending on what type of surgery that they had done. So there's a ton of reasons why you can have kind of new numbness and tingling, um, but you do want to make sure that it's not something like an, hematoma pressing up against a nerve or um, you know a splint that is on too tight compressing a nerve various kind of different things um, that could cause nerve damage um, this patient actually does have a splint on but um, ultimately I think he was okay sensation was actually pretty good um, didn't have any motor deficits so his strength was okay he was able to pump the ankle move it up and down um, with equal strength to the other leg and things like that and um, so we just elevated him a little bit, gave him a little bit of reassurance and uh, told him to keep me posted if things uh, worsen. But um, it's at that, that perfect time of day where at 3.45 it's definitely too late to try to go back to sleep because I'd be waking up at 5 anyways. So um, when in doubt, just grab some food, watch some TV. <laughs> Residency is different than most jobs, y'all, I promise. Well, that was a full day, literally a full 24 hour day, but I'll let you enjoyed this video. And if you did like this video and you wanna see more of what life is like as a resident at the Mayo Clinic, then you may enjoy this video here. But as always, keep evolving, and I'll see you guys in the next one.